AO Foundation's CEO and Vice Chairman, Rolf Jecker, who will explain how the AO Foundation is looking to the future and the burden of low injury in low-income countries. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my last official function at the AO Foundation after eight years where I had the privilege to serve as the CEO. And I leave with a dream for the 100th anniversary of the AO. And the dream is a world where timely and appropriate care of injuries is available to all patients. There's no reason why this dream should not become true. We have resolved that problem to a very large extent in our developed countries. But strong action is needed if we want to succeed. The AO Foundation, as you heard several times this evening, has been on the forefront of this revolution, which needs to go to further parts of the world. You've seen this picture before today. That's what our founders saw 60 years ago in our hospitals. Treatment 14 to 16 weeks, 40 to 70 percent of patients disabled, hours to reach a hospital. This is today's situation in many of the low middle income countries as it was here 60 years ago that were treated by our surgeons. Again, 14 to 16 weeks in hospital, 70 to 80 percent disabilities, days to reach a hospital, if at all. If I asked you now, what is more important in terms of death annually? Is it the death of contagious diseases, HIV, AIDS, TB, malaria, or is it the death from injuries? When I ask this question normally, people would always say contagious diseases because that's what they read every day in the papers. Well, it's not the case. It's the other way around. 30% more deaths from injuries annually. And 90% of this is in low middle income countries. And 40% among young population in the most productive protective uh, part of their lives. Additionally, and that's very tragic, that for every one injury-related death, we have 10 non-fatal injuries that cause permanent disability. This is because there is no appropriate and timely treatment, and it amounts to a staggering 50 million people a year and I took the conservative estimate that I found. The inequality is striking. For the same injury, if you arrive in the hospital in Africa, it's about one-third of the survival rate as if you would be in a hospital here. And for serious injuries, it's one six. This is due, obviously, to lack of training, lack of equipment, and lack of infrastructure. We all agree prevention is key, and whatever we can do to avoid people dying on the road, drowning, falling from a tree, we need to do that very much government action required by legislation, by enforcement, infrastructure, and other areas. Again, our example in Europe, other countries shows it can be done if action is taken. While we recognize that this is a huge problem, this is not the vocation 
of the AO Foundation. Our vocation is to build trauma system to save lives. Through pre-hospital care, often you have heard this expression of the golden hour, which is so important that people get quickly to the hospital. We have this study by the Economist Intelligence Unit, which is distributed and which you have access to, which particularly highlights this element, how important this is to improve. Secondly, is the hospital-based trauma care, the care of the patient during that period, and last but not least, obviously, the rehabilitation. Now, the treatment is extremely cost-effective, also compared to other illnesses. So, in simple terms, for one dollar invested in treatment for injuries, you might get about 50 percent more return than in many other illnesses, including contagious diseases. And while conservative treatment might still be the predominant treatment in these areas, it is shown that surgical operative treatment can provide big benefits as it helps to reduce the stays in the hospital to only five days. But also, and we all appreciate that, it will avoid deformities and pain and potentially poverty. So when this is all the way it is, the way I describe it, why isn't this problem more addressed? It's because the financial support is lacking. Again here, the discrepancy is huge. Contagious diseases, as we showed it, gets 36% of all the money, trauma, injuries, 1%. When I use this benchmark, please understand I'm not belittling the contagious diseases issue. I just want to show to you what could be done if we would pay the same attention to an even bigger problem than the contagious diseases. Now, we all know if a problem is not recognized, money is not flowing. So the AO Foundation has been stepping up to the challenge because there are very few important players in the field of caring for injuries in low middle income countries. The AO Foundation, together with the Hans Jörg Wyss Foundation, facilitated the establishment of a separate organization called the AO Alliance and supports it financially. I would like to use this opportunity to thank the AO Foundation and Hans Jörgwies Foundation for this generous support. It allows the AO Fund Alliance to play an increasingly important role training surgeons in these countries. In Africa alone now, over the last three years, we have built up a faculty of 400 African surgeons, some of them that are here today. We are also building coalitions, as this problem is too huge to be tackled individually. The WHO, ICRC, African Union, G4 Alliance, etc. Recognizing the importance of the problem, and in the context of the 60th anniversary, the AO Foundation has decided to create a Jubilee Fund of 15 million Swiss francs. 10 million of these go to a special initiative with the World Health Organization. There are different pillars built in this initiative, and one of them is awareness. And it's awareness that is necessary for the reasons I outlined, because it doesn't seem to be recognized as a global health issue. 
And we have to make sure the global community, but also local decision makers, they understand the severity of the problem and the need to put strategies, policies and standards in place and to, to establish national sustainable trauma system frameworks. In the context of the program that is proposed, we will select 10 countries where we can try to apply these proposals. And last but not least, obviously, there is an implementation component to train local healthcare administrators and managers to support implementation. Now, let me, to conclude, give a short outlook to the future of the AO Foundation. The AO mission today in the future, in my view, always has to be improving patient care and see where the need is greatest. And it has to remain as unique and relevant as when the AOS founders launched a surgical revolution, as you could hear in various uh, speeches this evening. It should feel, always fo follow this guidance when it implements different activities. And these are leveraging partnerships. We have heard how successful the AIA Foundation has been by using partnerships to leverage the impact. Continuing its valuable and unique global education program, hardly anybody has such a reach and such a global standard as the AO Foundation. The AO Foundation also will in future strengthen further its innovation through the research, development, and startup investments. And last but not least, increasingly addressing and including the needs of low-income countries. With this, the future, I'm convinced, will continue to be groundbreaking and exemplary, and my dream will come true. Thank you.